What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, back in your podcast feeds with the 2024 lineup of episodes. So after the break that I mentioned in December, I'm now back, got a a fun-filled episode for you this week and an update just on the short-term schedule of episodes, what's going on, what you can expect, and all of that good stuff. So Um, For this episode, it's going to be split into two parts. The first part is going to be some of the movies that I've been watching, a TV series season that I had a chance to finish. Um, And then I'm going to round it out with an update for the vacation that I went on. Um, That was it will lead me directly into the second segment, which is going to be um, something new that I'm going to try. That thing I mentioned for the short term, which I'll get to when I get there. And then an update on some gameplay that I've been up to. So to start it off, um, as far as the um, movies and stuff and TV shows that I've been watching, um, I don't know what prompted me to think about it, but I was I got to thinking to see if the Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. movie, the one with David Hasselhoff, was streaming anywhere. And for some reason, the whole film is up on YouTube, so I did give it a watch. Um, I think I've, I had seen it in the past, or I'd seen bits and pieces of it, and so it was a nice surprise to see it up on YouTube. Um, I do pay for YouTube Premium, so I don't know if there's commercials or anything in there, but so that's why I'm going to say it was commercial free or ad free for me, but um, don't quote me on that just because of the whole YouTube Premium thing. But Overall, the film generally stands up. It is still does um, feel like an 80s, a movie in the 80s trying to be in the future, but it's very much still in the 80s. So um, the costumes were OK. They, were, they weren't like futuristic or in the past, but they kind of hold with a the theming around how um, Nick Fury looked at the time. So in general, that all was fine. Um, the hairstyles were okay. They didn't. They weren't anything special or anything like that. Mostly because once you get out of the whole like poofy hairstyle of like the 60s and 70s, and you start getting into the more straightened hair and things like that of the 80s and 90s, then it kind of doesn't really take you out of it for that. So things like costumes and acting will can can make or break the a story. So with that being said. Um, um, like I said, overall, the acting was fine. It wasn't great. Um, the only thing that stands up is the sci-fi of all of it. So um, when you see things like the helicarrier and the weapons were fine, actually. So it was really mostly just the helicarrier. But as far as the story goes, it really only it really um, compares mostly to um, Avengers Age of Ultron, where in the beginning scene, you have that stuff with... Uh, um, Dr. Zola. I think there's a little bit of that in Captain America Civil War, maybe. I forgot where he shows up again, but in general, you have um, things like that where um, a lot of the story arcs and styles and acting and all of that was fine. So in general, I actually didn't mind a lot of it. So even if they did re-release the film and did like a 4k upscale provided like a dvd quality version uh or blu-ray quality version of the film and one that's not you know like that looks like a vhs upload to youtube then it probably could be an okay film and it generally works as well as far as um being an alternate timeline of david hasselhoff as nick fury and then um uh, samuel jackson as nick fury which kind of throws a whole wrench into things so i think David Hasselhoff played um, Peter Quill's movie in Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. Um, So correct me if I'm wrong on that. So it's kind of a weird thing there. But overall, I found I found that I still enjoy the movie. For me, it generally holds up. I probably give it a grade of about 80 to 85 percent. 
David Hasselhoff is having fun. Everyone else is kind of acting around him. So generally, um, the movie is fine. So I'll give it that 80 to 85 percent. Um, otherwise, I also had a chance to watch Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which I actually kind of found it as a pretty good movie for the first half. But then when we get into the second half, it finally hit me that it feels a lot like Avengers Endgame meets Ready Player One, but with robots. So um, it felt very video gamey. You have all these um, Autobots, you're fighting the bad guys and you have a lot of villains and things like that. So overall, it felt very it felt OK as far as world building goes, but um, it feels like it was a movie that should have been a lot sooner. So. Um, in the, I guess in the Shia LaBeouf series of things, it feels like the, they should have progressed the story along a little bit more than they did. So while the, with the first one being against, um, Optimus Prime against the Decepticons and then introduced the, um, I think they did those micro machine robots or whatever they were in the second one. And then with the third one, they should have included like these or do the dinosaurs in the second one and then the beasts in the third one or something like that so maybe they weren't ready and they're ready now for that sort of stuff but it was an okay film neither here nor there so if you're a transformers fan then you'll enjoy it if you're not then it'll just be another action movie for you so hard to recommend it but for me it wasn't terrible it was fine i got through it i didn't really find myself bored through it so that's kind of where i land on that um, and then to round out the movies, I actually had a chance to catch up on two movies that are a sequel to another movie. So I had seen the first film, Mur Murder on the Orient Express, and I've been meaning to watch Death on the Nile and A Haunting in Venice, um, which I never got around to. So since I took this time off, I went on vacation. I actually had a chance to watch both of those and they were both good, but as far as the better movie, I probably prefer A Haunting in Venice a little bit more. Mostly because Death on the Nile feels like Murder on the Orient Express, but on water. So the visuals over it were good, the acting was good. Um, nothing bad against it, but if you're going to watch um, Murder on the Orient Express or Death on the Nile, um, either one of them can be... Um, watch in place of the other so if you prefer trains and a land-based movie then you have the orient express if you prefer a, a boat and on water then death on the on the nile works to fill that need um and then a haunting in venice takes a slightly different turn because you have hercule piro um being retired and he's pulled into a haunted house style movie so um with that you kind of get um kind of a clue based movie so a little bit more along those lines so that's kind of why i liked it a little bit more it was well done it was, all three were well done but um orient express and nile i think are about equal films so you have two versions of the same thing and then haunting in venice is a little bit different along those lines um and then finally i had a chance to watch viking season five the second half so um i think i saw the first half by the end of 2023 so I finally finished off that season. Um, overall, very good. You ha still have um, all the Ra the uh, Sons of Ragnar fighting against each other. Um, you have not necessarily shifting of alliances, but you have, you know, um, Ivar um, having his brothers, except for Bjorn, and then him being, you know, kind of going crazy off the deep hat and uh, forming a god complex, driving his brothers away and they end up going back to Bjorn and they end up teaming up with each other. We learn about a unknown brother or unknown son of Ragnar named Magnus who'd been growing up in England. So things like that. And then you have, you know, the English British side of stuff with the Saxons and everyone um, trying to ramp up their armies to fight against the Vikings and all of that. So kind of a religious thing. So overall pretty good. Um, I'm still enjoying the sh show. So they, continue to you know honor the memory of Ragnar everyone's still living in his shadow remembering what he did what he did for you know the Viking culture as a whole so um with that I'm heading right into season six so um can't wait to see what that brings and apparently there's a spin-off show on Netflix called uh Vikings Valhalla so all of the existing six seasons of Vikings are on Amazon Prime so once I finish season six 
um, coming down the pipeline this year is going to be my watch through of that season. I'm kind of curious to see what they do in that show. So look out for season, the review of season six coming soon and um, Vikings Valhalla sometime later um, this year, hopefully in the first half sometime. So look out for that. Um, and then also to round out the um, MCU um, um, update, uh, I guess the Marvels is going to be streaming on um, Disney Plus as of February 7th. So look, so I'll be watching that hopefully for the next episode. I'll have that watched and be able to review it. So look out for that. I was going to watch it on my vacation. And um, so actually I'll jump into that right now since I'm up to that point. So... Um, the second half of January, I did go on a, a two and a half week trip to India. Um, I hadn't been in a long time. So as a family, we wanted to go, um, go around the side, just see the sites and places we hadn't been before, visit some different temples that we hadn't seen and things like that. So we went on that trip. Um, overall, it was a good time. Uh, the country's progressing a lot. There's a lot of innovation going on, development going on. There's still a ways to go, but you can see a lot of the change if you've been, if you know you haven't been there in you know 10 or 15 or 20 years and you go now, you can see a lot of the change that's going on, especially in the big cities like Delhi and Mumbai and all of that. So if you go into those big cities, then you'll see a lot of development going on and already have happened. So um, on one of the flights though, there was, I did see the Marvel streaming, but then I didn't get a chance to finish it just because, you know, I fell asleep. I was finishing other movies like the um, Nile and Haunting in Venice and all of that stuff. So um, didn't get a chance to watch it. So now that I saw the commercial that's going to be streaming on Disney Plus on February 7th, um, I figured that once it's streaming there, I will watch it and give a review there. From the trailers I saw, it actually didn't look that bad it actually intrigued me to the point where i want to watch it so i'm not sure why it got panned or uh what's going on so once i watch it i'll have a better idea of that but um that's the update i wanted to give for that but as far as the india trip goes and in this case it relates to exactly what i wanted to do or one thing i wanted to do for this year is get back into android reviews um updates quick tips and things like that like i used to do uh, years ago so um, years ago, I had an Android podcast and a Quick Tips podcast separate from each other and um, kind of retired them just because, it, you know, the whole, not to say Android was getting stale, there was a lot of random things going on or a lot of things being going on with the operating system and the environment, but it was a lot of back-end changes rather than front-end changes, so um, things like that were not really, to me, they're not really as interesting if you, I'm talking about, you know, Hey, the there's a fluid dis, um, UI environment. So, uh, granted, on one hand, you can have you can talk about a fluid uh, visual environment to make the visuals of Android look better, and more better animations and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where if it looks good, it looks good, and it a good UI should um, not be in your way. You shouldn't notice you know differences in a UI. So. I kind of retired that stuff and kind of moved away from that. But um, with Android 14, I kind of wanted to get back into that a little bit just because it's at a point now where it feels like um, it's not that there's a disparate landscape for Android smartphones or a fragmentation like it used to be. You kind of have your Pixel devices, your Samsung devices, and then a few others here and there. You know, you have Oxygen OS for OnePlus and then hyper os i think from huawei i want to say but for the most part everyone is trying to go to a more um unified look and feel so with everything that's going on i feels like i can want to get back into you know the tips and app reviews and things like that so for this review with my vacation in india one of the things i definitely want to talk about is camera settings so with modern smartphones you can get a lot of good camera settings like 4k video 60 um, FPS or even up to 120 FPS on some phones. So the thing to do, I and I'm I try to make sure I do that, especially with family and friends, is set the camera settings to the max most common settings. So I always say for now, like on video, 
be sure to set your video settings to 4K and 60 frames per second because that's what um, that's the max that YouTube allows uploading videos to, but also that's the max that Google Photos um, up, um, allows uploading videos at. Um, it does t um, accept 120 frames per second videos, but it takes it and kind of puts it into slow motions and you have a slider that you can adjust and things like that. But um, to avoid something like that, 60 frames per second is good. So once they support 120 frames per second videos, then I'll adjust my recommendation to that. So as of this recording, I always say set your video settings to 4K 60 FPS. You're going to get good quality videos the best color range for your device and is the best way you can share your videos. So even if you're sharing on places like WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp now has an HD option so you can send higher quality pictures and videos than the default. So um, I'm trying to get everyone used to um, setting that setting, but um, 4K 60 FPS is good for sharing, uh, whether you're showing people on your phone, uploading to YouTube and things like that. So I just recommend that. As far as camera settings or like photo settings go, I want to say that whatever the max is, whether you have auto HDR or HDR on, if you have that option, I always recommend people to play with their uh, photos. So take um, two photos of the same thing with auto HDR and then HDR on and see how it, uh, see how the photo comes out on both. Um, just because sometimes auto HDR may take, um, it also get or because sometimes um, HDR takes a second to load, auto doesn't work as good as manual, things like that. But also it gives you a way to practice um, focusing your shot and actually manually focusing. So one of the things um, I found over the years is when you're um, taking a photo and you have a chance to, you know, frame your shot, be sure to f um, touch your screen for where you want to focus your shot so your camera will zoom in uh, adjust your focus so you can take a better quality picture and you can avoid blurry pictures as well. Um, also in more modern or in recent smartphones, so as recent as the OnePlus 10 Pro, which is what I'm using, um, it also supports a, something called 10-bit color. So rather than I think the traditional 8-bit um, color, it actually adds more col um, input for colors. So when you have things like gradients and fades and you know, shadows in a wider range of colors. It actually helps um, bring in more colors into the picture, more pixels and things like that. So you get a smoother shot. So when you do have things like shadows and transitions between different lighting environments, the picture that looks that much cleaner, smoother, and even because you have less of that granulation going on between those um, color, um, different colors. So going into your settings, you'll see if you have an option like that. Um, me personally, I don't use any other filters for the most part, mostly because in general, I try not, I try to frame my shots so I don't have to use it. But, um, if you have to, you have to. So for example, in one shot in, I think it was in Mumbai where it was a hazy day, but an overall otherwise clear shot. Um, I took a quick video just to see how the, well the filter works to get rid of some of the haze. So rather than a grayish video, it was a little bit more bluish video. So you'll see that up on the YouTube channel. So, um, you can kind of compare that to other stuff. And then also I, in like early on in the first few videos I took, I didn't follow my own rule of checking my settings before I started my vacation. So my first few videos were in 4k but 60 frames per second was off so when you see those videos between the first few and then the second half of the playlist you'll see a marked difference because the 60 frames per second actually provides a more um, balanced uh, smoother and a better looking uh, video than the videos without it so um, like I said that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in sharing my um, thoughts about my trip to India is that with Android and I'm going to assume a similar thing with iOS that you can you have all those various toggles and filters and options and settings so with storage these days if you have the storage definitely max out what you can do and use various backup options to back up, back stuff up whether you're using Dropbox copying stuff straight off your phone to a laptop or desktop um, using YouTube to upload videos and things like that make sure you put them somewhere so you can maintain that quality and you have that backup so um that's about it for this particular week's android tip 
Um, in the in the show notes link, I do have a link to the video I uh, made. I did a compilation of videos of all the videos, and there's a link there to the playlist for the individual videos. So if you want the full, I think it's 40 or 50 minute video, you can watch that whole thing. But if you want the parts with all the different locations that we went to, then the playlist is up. It's up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Patel N01, but also in the compilation video. So uh, you guys can check that out. And then I also put a post up on the blog, also linked in the show notes for this episode. So um, you can check out some of the photo, the highlight photos that I wanted to share that were some of the um, better ones that I took. So um, uh, you can check those out. So for the most part, they were all, or I don't want to say for the most part, but some were um, unedited photos. So just I took the photos so they're as is, but other ones I did do a little bit of color enhancement. Um, I use magic eraser in some places where I, it feels like I could get rid of stuff. So um, other photos are like that, but all uh, photos and videos were taken on my OnePlus 10 Pro. So with that being said, I'm going to round out this particular episode with a slight, with my gameplay update. So I did start playing uh, Max Payne for Android or replaying it because I did play it a couple years ago. So um, as of this recording, I'm done with the first episode, The American Dream. So overall, it's still a good game for the most part. The remaster that they did for Android as of a couple years ago generally holds up for the lighting and gameplay and movements and all that. But the other, um, like the character models and some of the environments kind of don't hold up. It's mostly just the character models because you'll see the way they hold the gun, Max Payne's face, and things like that kind of just don't uh, really um, stand out. So there is talks of a Max Payne 1 and 2 remaster versions coming out this year in 2024. So I hope that does happen. I did see that there was a modder who created an RTX version of Max Payne 1, but it, as of this recording, it looks like it's only um, compatible or available for the desktop, not on mobile. So I'll keep my eye out and see if it does end up on being on mobile. So if I if that's the case and I'm able to continue my gameplay or start pick up my gameplay from there with that version, then I'll give it a shot. So um, I'll hold up my final review till I finish the game, but. I am a little bit biased that I did enjoy the game quite a bit the first time when it first came out and then a couple years ago and I replayed it so um, replaying it now I'm kind of I'm trying to keep it uh, as keep it as a I've never played it so how does it hold up so that's the first thing that stands out is the character models um, having played the dream sequence for the start of the second episode this time around it feels like it's a lot easier than it was before. So while I would say my residual memory is really that good, it kind of feels like um, it was easier this time around. Like I went down the hallways and I just kept picking a bunch of lefts, I think one right. And I got to the end really quickly for the dripping blood scene with the baby. Um, I kind of just followed the path that looked like they had connections and where I could jump to and I got through that really quickly. So I don't remember why I had so much trouble before. Uh, maybe the, my, the Kishi V1 that I was using wasn't as um, sen or was too sensitive. So that's why I kept falling off and dying and ended up skipping it. Whereas this time I did fall off a couple of times and I think I jumped too far a couple of times. But for the most part, it was actually pretty easy to get to. So um i actually didn't have any problems with it so that's going to be my the true test with the second dream sequence at the start of episode three is if um, how well i can get through that dream sequence as far as going through the flames and the fire and if i can even get through it at all so um we'll see how that goes if anything i'll skip that that like i did last time but i thought it was fine for this time around that i made it through so i was happy that i didn't have to skip it so um there is that so that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, more thoughts on my trip to India or any of the reviews, you can comment on the posts on the social media sites. All of them are linked at headphonesneal.reviews, which also has links to past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that stuff. Um, this particular episode I'm releasing around the same time for patrons and on the public feed just because I've been off for a few weeks so I'll get so there'll still be that differentiation of the ad free version on Patreon and then the ad version on the public feed but I'm releasing them both on the same day so if you like this episode and want to support the show 
Be sure to um, show your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. And as I mentioned earlier, the um, YouTube site or my YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash PatelN01 for all gameplay videos, um, the YouTube podcast version of the podcast, um, and all of that stuff. Um, and of course, so after Max Payne, um, as far as gameplay goes, um, apparently the Delta version of Doom was released by a modder. Like he had enough assets and resources to finish the, like the pre-release version of Doom. So, um, I was, I figure after Max Payne, I'm going to give that a shot. See if I can play through a few levels or see how far I get, or even beat the whole game. See how it goes. I don't know how much of the game is in there or how long it is. So, um, I'm going to give that a shot next. I think it's called Doom Delta or Delta Next or something weird like that. But once I get there, I'll um, share the YouTube link and all of that stuff and um, where the uh, how I'm going to play it and all that stuff. I assume it's going to be compatible or it's going to be able to be played by a um, GZ Doom. So if that's the case, I'll be able to play that. So that's the that's the plan for the next gameplay. And depending on how that goes after that, or if I can't get that, that to play properly, then I'll bump up the timeline. But after that, the next gameplay is going to be my 2024 gameplay of Knights of the Old Republic. Um, I'm still planning on doing a Mandalorian style character. So someone who's um, blaster and pistol heavy, um, but has force powers. So think of like a Sabine Wren, which thinking about it now, I might make my character a female and do something like a female soldier so something to match um um sabine ran the most i guess so but regardless my character is going to be a mandalorian type with which is weapons heavy but with force powers and able to use a lightsaber so i don't think that there's any black lightsabers in knights of the old republic so um i'm going to kind of make that portion just follow the usual you know um i guess uh, dark side character well i don't know yet i'll maybe i'll make her a light side character to kind of follow sabine ren properly but um yeah just maybe do a light side character and um make her the redeemed revan style character or something like that but that's for when i get there but that's still the plan for that so that should cover at least the first half of the year and then we'll see how things go i'm hoping to have my gigabyte internet set up by then so I can start doing more um, stream gameplay like through Xbox Game Pass or something like that so that's more for later in the year but for now um, it's Max Payne for Android and then for next week at least the Marvels of uh, probably a Vikings update and whatever else I have a chance to watch but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and support subscribing to and supporting the show and until next time.